Hi, this is Dr. Gregory Sadler. I'm a professor of philosophy and the president and founder of an educational consulting company called Reason.io, where we put philosophy into practice. I've studied and taught philosophy for over 20 years, and I find that many people run into difficulties reading classic philosophical texts. Sometimes it's the way things are said or how the text is structured, but the concepts themselves are not always that complicated, and that's where I come in. To help students and lifelong learners, I've been producing longer lecture videos and posting them to YouTube. Many viewers say they find them useful. What you're currently watching is part of a new series of shorter videos, each of them focused on one core concept from an important philosophical text. I hope you find it useful as well. In Chapter 5 of the Categories, Aristotle spends a good bit of space discussing the relationship between species and genus, or the, at least this is how we're translating those terms, eidos and genos. You notice that genos and genus are, are quite close together. Eidos is, is the Greek for the, the form of things or the type of things, um, translated in Latin by species. So that, that's why we have the word species there. And these are showing up quite a lot, not only in the categories, but also in, in other works by Aristotle, particularly where he's needing to differentiate classes of things from each other. I want to say from the start that this is not exactly the same thing as what you might have been introduced to in a biology class or an earth science class, where you, you learn these terms species, genus, and then you learn all sorts of other things above them as other classificatory um, levels, all the way up to, say, kingdom, right, where we have animal, uh, vegetable, and then whatever else. Uh, sometimes they change over time, um, whatever else we want to place in there. Now, um, it's not to say that it's totally disconnected from that, and that classificatory scheme that we use today did in part come out of distant origins in Aristotle's work. But what's important to keep in mind is that although species might more or less correspond to what we nowadays call a species, genus just means all these other classes of things, classes of species that can be arranged in a hierarchy. So everything from you know genus all the way up to kingdom would be a spe would be a genus in Aristotelian parlance. So whatever baggage you're bringing from uh, you know what you've learned in, in modern science classes, you probably want to set that aside, at least for understanding what Aristotle means by species and genus in his categories. It's not to say that it's wrong or anything like that. It's just not going to be particularly helpful, I think. So what will be helpful? Well, realizing from the beginning that we're, what we're talking about are classes or kinds or associations of things. And we can understand things here in two different ways. I mentioned that genus is you know, associating different species together. The species is, is closer. So when we say, for example, human being or horse, those are examples of species. And, you know, nowadays we might acknowledge, well, there's subspecies, you know, and we tend to base it on whether uh, the, the species, the members of the species can successfully breed with each other and, and produce offspring. Um, Aristotle is primarily interested in associating things under the same linguistic and mental rubric in terms of having the same basic type of being. So human and horse would be examples of, of ade, you know, the plural for eidos, species. Um, animal would be a much higher level, and there it's, it's not just extending to all the individual things that we call animal, it's including the different classes or species. So horse and human, cockroach, uh, you know, potato bug, or some people call them roly polies or things like that. Um, all of these would be examples of animals, right? And their species would fall into that higher class of things uh, where the things are indeed the species. And Aristotle will go on to say that the relationship between individual thing and species, 
is along the same lines as the relationship between species and, and uh, genus. So um, he also talks about these in terms of secondary substance. If that's confusing, you probably want to watch the discussion of primary and secondary substance, which covers some of the same ground. Now, here what we're particularly interested in is that these are secondary substances. These are not substances in their own right. As, as a matter of fact, Aristotle says that if you don't have any, any humans, that you don't have the species of human anymore, right? Um, I, I suppose you could index it to the past and say when we're talking about extinct species that we are talking about the class of things that used to exist, right? Like various dinosaurs or, you know, uh, trilobites or interesting things along those lines, you know, uh, plants that, that no longer exist anymore as well. But anyway, secondary substances. He says that these alone among the various kinds of predicates define or show, and the word that he has there is uh, deloi, um, they, they display, they, they denote, you might say, primary substances. So when we're using the word horse of individual existing horses, or perhaps even imaginary horses or past horses that no longer exist or future horses that are yet hopefully to come. Um, we, are, we are using the term to pick out something that they, you know, they share a common nature, their hoarseness, if you like it, or humanity is what we use, you know, in terms of human beings. Um, so they, they show it. Sometimes this, you know, define is how it's translated, but perhaps show or denote is a better way of talking about it. So, you know, what are the primary substances? Individual things, right? Um, we could use examples here. Chalk. The word chalk is used of each of these individual bits of chalk. Um, all of which were at one point much longer, right? They're all the same substance too. Um, and we could, we could do similarly of, of a human being, me and you, we both, if you're a human being, <laughs> not some, some, somebody's dog or cat watching it or some alien, then we, we all fit under this, this general term and we're associated in that. Now, um, notice what Aristotle's saying here. This, this connects with um, something else that he was talking about earlier on. We predicate species and genus of individual things. So we can point at me and say human being. We can also point at me and say horse, falsely predicating that of me. We can point at me and say animal. That's at a higher level of abstraction, right? Saying human being, as Aristotle points out, is more informative than saying just animal. Say animal, then you know there's certain characteristics like, well, we expect me to be eating, uh, eliminating, uh, reproducing, uh, moving around from place to place, doing certain things like uh, sensing. Not all animals necessarily do all these things to the same extent. Um, some actually remain in place once they're fixed and, and stay there for life. But you get the idea. Locomotion might be less essential to animal than is uh, respiration or or uh, nutrition, or however we want to think about these things. But this is something that's being predicated, and it's not being predicated in the same way as saying, for example, that I am wearing a shirt and tie. That would be like the category of um, you know, possession or state that we, we talk about in Aristotle's categories. It's not the same thing as saying that I am a father. That's a relational term. That's the category of relation, prose t. Uh, it's not the same thing as saying, I am um, a middle-aged male, right? Uh, although that, that's, you know, pretty, that's getting a lot closer to the core than the fact that I'm wearing a shirt and tie. It's still not something that's absolutely, you know, essential uh, in, in the same way that saying I'm human is for Aristotle. Male, uh, debatable for Aristotle. Middle-aged, definitely not. I was young once, I'll be older <laughs> soon, and uh, middle age is just something I'm passing through. So these are the predicates that show us what the individual things are. This is why he will say 
that what we're able to predicate of the individual thing is both the name, the onoma, and the definition. Um, definition, we want to be a little bit careful with there. That's one way to translate it. Statement, uh, meaning statement of its, what it is to be that thing, the statement of its substance. Calling a person a human being is denoting certain things of them. For, for example, for Aristotle, rational, rational animal is the you know, way in which uh, animal is the genus, rational is the differentia, and the species is rational animal, uh, human being rationality would be something that would be of my essence, what it means for me to be a human being. So these are very important kinds of, of predicates. And that is what we do when we say that something is this kind of thing. Or we ask, is, is this this sort of thing or this sort of thing? Is this an animal? Well, we start looking for the characteristics that animals have, right? We decide, for example, that you know, mushrooms are fungi rather than animals. Um, another thing that Aristotle says that's quite important is that uh, genus and species are not present in a subject, although they are predicated of a subject. So they're not predicated of primary substances. As Aristotle says, we're not saying that humanity exists inside of the individual human being, we are predicating human of the human being precisely because the individual human being is not just sort of a receptacle that humanity is poured into, although sometimes it may seem like that when you're dealing with children, uh, perhaps, right? Uh, but that, that's a rather metaphorical way of talking about the process of maturation and acquiring rationality. But the point is, um, in, you know, the individual thing has its nature, a nature that it shares with other individual things of the same species, but the species itself is not in the individual human being or horse or mushroom of this sort or, you know, whatever else we want to, to pick. So um, it's not in a subject, but it is predicated of a subject. The last thing that I think is particularly important to drive home is that um, substances, Aristotle says, and differentia, those are the things that we use to differentiate uh, different species, for example, from each other, right? Animal, but rational animal. Um, the dog, not a rational animal, different kind of animal. Um, so the, the substances are predicated univocably, univocally. Um, that is to say that when we say human of me, we're not saying human in a different sense than we're saying human of you or some other human being. And if we want to try to extend the term human to something else, like, for example, if we're considering whether AIs should be called human or not or classed as a different type of thing, uh, we want the predication to not be metaphorical in the sense of being sort of just derivative or uh, equivocal where things mean different, they have different meanings. We want it to be one single core meaning that stays the same, that is stable across the, the entire uh, class of things. Um, so for example, uh, we, we've used the, the example of seal. If you're going to talk about the species seal, um, you wouldn't want to include in that the, the uh, uh, contemporary singer, Seal, who is a human being, better described as human being, right? He has the same name, but does not have the same definition as the creature that you know, swims in the sea and goes, or, 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 you know, and, and eats fish, and I don't know what else they do, <laughs> play around, you know, quite, quite a bit. Different kind of, of individual uh, substance, Seal versus seal. That would be an example of equivocal uh, predication. We don't want that when we're talking about species and genuses. They are predicated uh, univocally. So hopefully that sorts out all this discussion that you're going to see in the categories about species and genus. I want to stress one more time, species applies to individual things 
genus is any sort of associating class above that in the hierarchy that takes different species and orders them in relation to each other as part of a group. So human being, horse, animal. 